And Minister, thank you for coming to the House. And I suppose it's important to say at the outset that we welcome and support any measures that increase the number of special education or additional needs education uh, places and supports within uh, this country. But I think it's also important to say that I see this legislation as being only a, a very small measure uh, in the overall need um, with regards to ensuring that we provide for children with regards to uh, who, those who have additional or special needs in, in, in this country. Um, we know that once children are diagnosed, they're entitled to a certain number of services. But the issue that I'm coming up against time and time again is that very basic issue of getting a diagnosis. In the Cabergridge Gorman CDNT at the moment, there's a wait of three plus years to get a diagnosis. And all the while, children and their families are left in limbo because they don't have that diagnosis. And I would hope, Minister, that you've looked very closely at the recommendations from the Ombudsman for Children with regards to creating alternative pathways to additional uh, need support uh, and special needs support within schools. Because frankly, it is simply appalling that some of us here are having to recommend to families to go away and spend somewhere between 1,000 and 3,000 euros to get a private diagnosis in order to be able to get their constitutional right to an education in this country. Um, I, I do want to say, though, that I'm, I'm slightly uncomfortable with uh, a part of this bill or the narrative around this bill, which is about directing schools to make provision. Um, because for me, the elephant in the room here is that there's many DESH banned one schools across the country going over and beyond to actually ensure that there is provision for the children attending their schools, while other schools are shunning their responsibilities. And I suppose, Minister, I ha and it is because of that precise situation that I have to raise with you, Minister, the comments that you made when you singled out four schools in recent weeks. You said the schools had not been forthcoming in opening special classes in specific circumstances where they know they have capacity. You said the decision to name schools was because they were not engaging at all and they were just ignoring correspondence. Minister, as a lawyer and as a minister, you know that words matter and words can do enormous damage. And your words have caused enormous distress to the teaching staff and to the families who attend St. Gabriel's in Stony Batter because it was never the case that they were not engaging. It was never the case that they were ignoring correspondence. In fact, they've been engaging with an architect engaged by the department since last autumn with regards to the refurbishment of two school rooms so they could open an ASD unit in 2023. And it is the case that they have eight class teachers and six resource teachers. So it, like, it couldn't be further from the truth that this school is not committed to special needs. In fact, so much of what the school does is about providing for children with additional needs. And it is telling that the department sent an email at 7.30 on a Friday night, the 17th of June, to the Archbishop of Dublin, the patron of the school. It, the department didn't even have the grace to email the school directly and say, we're going to publish your name unless you communicate. And the school responded within hours. But yet, that did not matter because, Minister, unfortunately, you proceeded to name that school. And those teachers now are looking back at a decade of progress and saying, what does the department think of our work? What does the community think about our work? And I would ask you, Minister, to please engage directly with the school, issue a public apology, because it is not true that they were not engaging. And there's enormous hurt in the community. And the last point I want to make, Minister, is that with regards to what I would call a whole of education approach, I understand that this bill is very much directed towards ensuring that there's adequate provision within primary schools. And as I said, we support that. But we also need to look at the continuum into secondary schools and also within preschools, because anybody who understands special needs knows that it's about early intervention. And the decisions made around St. Gabriel's and Stony Batter have meant that a preschool actually in that school has had to close. Two children with additional needs who are getting great support within that preschool now have nothing for this September. So at the age of four, they now have no special needs intervention in a preschool setting, but they'll have fabulous uh, uh, facilities once they go to primary school in September 12 months. But what about the 12 months in between? Weeks and months matter in children's lives at that age. 
So I would ask you, Minister, I would ask the Department what you're doing to ensure that children right across the spectrum are being looked after. Because unless we get those early interventions right, then we're storing all sorts of problems, as we're seeing already within the primary school system or within secondary school system.